You are about to overtake, if not already overtaken, your more powerful and your bigger neighbor to the south. The first ever positive election campaign. The first gender equal cabinet. And perhaps you're going to beat America to the punch putting a woman on a new Bank of Canada note. How does it feel being so ahead of the curve? Well, I think we feel pretty great, and we feel great that we have a prime minister that's recognized that gender equality is essential to good government. His leadership on this issue uh, has been demonstrated at a, at a national level, but he's also talking about it internationally, which is fantastic. It allows for the conversation to be amplified across the world, and of course, um, provides us with the, with the leadership that we need in order to move forward on gender equality in our own country. I want to play this soundbite because the Prime Minister himself described a conversation he had with his wife about this very issue. So I'm going to play it and then we'll talk about it. Took me aside a few months ago and said, okay, uh, it's great that you're engaged and modeling to your daughter that you want her empowered and everything, but you need to take as much effort to talk to your sons, my eight-year-old boy and my two-year-old, so a little young still, uh, about how he treats women and how uh, he is going to be grown up to be a feminist just like dad. And by the way, we shouldn't be afraid of the word feminist. Yeah. Men and women yeah. should use it to describe themselves <laughs> anytime they want. So let me ask you, Marie-Claude, is that getting any resistance, the idea of as he said, because it's 2015, to have this gender equal parity in the cabinet. Actually, to me, it's really normal. I feel comfortable. I don't feel any resistance. We really have a dream team around the cabinet table. It's a huge privilege to work with these women and men and in a very collaborative way. And when we add the voice of men and boys, in fact, we can see progress much more rapidly. And so his call to make sure that we are talking to men and boys is something that we are amplifying and that we're hearing from our international partners as well. To actually have a prime minister who is prepared to call himself a feminist is a huge start. And in that some of the young women haven't yet got there. And so to have young women and, and young men understanding that, that uh, women's rights are human rights and that the Prime Minister really has set an amazing tone and an example. And I think that's what we feel at the, at the Cabinet table. It really is a team where we count on one another. It is a, an amazing team. So you must be looking at the election across the border in the United States that has pretty much gripped the whole world and wondering how on earth the United States, certainly the Democratic or rather the Republican Party, can have this exact opposite to what Prime Minister Trudeau has had, this very negative campaign, this very sexist, misogynistic, you know, practically racist, xenophobic, anti-foreigner. What are you thinking when you're looking at that race? What we saw in our last election is that Canadians rejected politics of fear, of a division, of hatred, in fact. And what, what we embraced as a country was a positive message. Our prime minister, then leader of the party, was uh, focused on delivering a message of optimism, of hope, of how we are stronger because of our diversity, not in spite of it. So let me ask you, Marie-Claude Bibot, as Minister for International Development, you know, Refugees are causing a total upheaval across Europe and obviously immigration and refugees across the United States have become, you know, the lightning rod of that election as well for the Republicans. How is it that the Prime Minister managed to do exactly the opposite and get elected, be friendly and opening to refugees? These are uh, mother and father and, uh, and children. They want to go back to school. They, they just want to have their family in a safe place. So when you meet with them, uh, you don't feel this fear anymore. How do you as politicians convince your people that these are not objects of fear and hatred, but they are needing to be welcomed and provided asylum and refuge because of everything they've gone through? It is not working in Europe and it's not working in the United States. We are talking about 25,000 people all across Canada. It's not that much, finally. And many municipalities were calling the uh, Department of Immigration to welcome families. And now the biggest challenge is to um, integrate them within the communities. Uh, they have to learn the language. They have to find jobs. So this is the second step. And, uh, but we're proud of this. It wasn't that hard. 
Well, again, it's extraordinary. As you know, the United States has barely taken in 2,000 Syrian refugees, despite the fact that it takes practically two years for them to clear all the Department of Homeland Security and all the other security hurdles. Can I ask you, though, Carolyn Bennett, the Prime Minister also has uh, what, we, what we call uh, indigenous people, aboriginals and others in the cabinet. And you are the Minister for Indigenous and Northern Affairs. And I just quote a few statistics that uh, Aboriginals make up 5% of the population but have higher levels of poverty and addiction than any other Canadians. You know, more than a 1,000 Aboriginal women have been murdered between 1980 and 2012. What is it that you're going to do to make life fairer and more equitable and more just for people who've been denied justice for so long? Well, I am so pleased, firstly, to have the... Uh, a First Nations woman as the Minister of Justice is a, is a huge uh, symbol. We've got lots of work to do um, going forward to close the gap on education and, and economic and health outcomes, but we also know that, that being proud of who you are, that secure personal cultural identity that now is, is, is getting easier and easier to achieve because of these you know, terrific role models that exist coast to coast to coast that uh, we're, we're going to get there. And part of the job is also explaining to the the 96 percent of Canadians not from an Indigenous background that that reconciliation is their job, too. And uh, and that's, I think, what we've been saying. Ladies, ministers, it is the cynic in me. Is this just too good to be true? Is the prime minister just too cool for school <laughs> or is this for real? <laughs> As uh, someone who works uh, with my colleagues in cabinet with the prime minister, it is it's it, the, it, it, there's a sincerity to his leadership that is um, beyond compare. I think in terms of uh, politicians, he is very, very, very driven to make a difference. Um, what he is saying internationally is exactly what he says within closed doors. Um, he has a, a, a level of integrity in, uh, to him that, uh, quite frankly, attracted someone like me to politics. I ran a homeless shelter prior to being being elected last fall and I was uh, I am a, a left-leaning liberal I would not have joined uh, the Liberal Party had I not felt that uh, that there was a sincerity to these commitments and so it is my extreme honor to represent him you've all heard of Cape Breton yes. <laughs> yes. apparently up to a million Americans have uh, looked at the website to how can we move to Canada if Trump <laughs> wins the presidency are you prepared for the hordes? <laughs> it's very flattering that people want to move to our country and I think it's an indication actually of just of what we talked about uh, previously that people do respond to messages of positivity of hope of opportunity of equality of uh, the value of diversity and I think um, it's a very positive sign in fact that people are, are looking to our country uh, for leadership on those issues our example we hope will empower and embolden the young people and the women and the, that it means that everybody needs to get involved in politics. Well, ministers, I tell you, it is really good to hear this good news and we'll continue to be watching. Thank you so much for joining us, Minister Bibo, Minister Haidu and Minister Bennett. Thank you so much for being with us.